We gather in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we're celebrating Pentecost. The Spirit descended on the disciples. And what's clear from Scripture is that the the Spirit is willing to do the same for us. In fact, baptism is the time when we officially celebrate the descendant of the Spirit into the lives of the people who are being baptized. But that doesn't require baptism alone. What is required is a faith that Jesus is in fact Lord and Savior. And so with that in mind, let's start with the reading of the scripture. George. Let us pray. O oh God, you taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading today is taken from the book of Numbers, chapter 11, beginning with verse 24. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Midad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them? And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. And thus ends the first reading. The second reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. When the day of Pentecost arrived, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as of fire appeared to them and rested on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others, mocking, said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. 
And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants in these days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Here ends the second reading. Thank you, George. At this point, our service will continue with a presentation, music presentation of our one of our favorite. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross the emblem of suffering and shame and I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was slain so I cherish the rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown oh that old rugged cross so despised by the world as a wondrous attraction for me for the dear Lamb of God left his glory above to bear it on dark Calvary so I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus the Christ. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, there are very few things that we can count on. But we know from not only your promises in Scripture, but from the actions that you've taken for us, that we are indeed grateful or may be grateful you count on you. You keep your promises. You are who you say you are. And we thank you for all the ways in which you have manifested your spirit this Pentecost. In your name, amen. The gospel for this Pentecost Sunday is taken from the seventh chapter of the gospel according to St. John beginning with the 37th verse. In the last day of the feast, the great day Jesus stood up and cried out. Just a little bit of background before we get into the meat of the text. This was the festival of what was sometimes referred to as booths. It was a joyful occasion for the people of Israel who came together and celebrated day after day after day and central to the celebration was the recognition of the fact that Jesus and God would actually 
uh, bring living waters to the people. And so Jesus is here and he's attended the feast and he's on the last day, which was usually the most important day. And he cries out, if anyone is thirst, let him come to me and drink. If anyone thirsts. Now I thought about that for a moment when I read the text in preparation for today. I thought about it and it struck me that all of us are thirsty at some time. In fact, if you were here earlier, several people actually expressed their need for desire and compared how much water they had. Water is such an essential part of what it means for us to live. And what Jesus is saying is that if anyone thirsts, now if is a conditional uh, preposition, and if anyone thirsts, do you thirst? You see, the premise here is that we all thirst, but many of us are not willing to recognize that. I remember the first time when my doctor kept on being after me because I, my, I wasn't drinking enough water. And for a long period of time, drinking enough water became sort of the solution, no pun intended, the solution to most of our problems. And it's true, because the point that is being made is that if we as people, as physical people, can get dehydrated, because we're not drinking enough water. Jesus is recognizing that we can be spiritually dehydrated because we are not drinking enough water. And that's the important part here. It's so easy for us to sort of say, yes, water is good, refreshing, and then we put it aside. But we are called to be honest with ourselves and one another and recognize that we need, that we are in fact thirsty, and when we fail to recognize that, we become spiritually dehydrated, and that doesn't do anyone any good. But the text doesn't, or Jesus doesn't end here. He says, if anyone is thirsty, let him, what? Come to me. You see, acknowledging your thirst isn't sufficient. What's important is to recognize that there is a solution and the difficulty that we have is that so often when we think about the solution to our being dehydrated, we tend to forget that there's really only one source that can quench our thirst. Now we can try all sorts of things. We can literally try uh, to drink ourselves into oblivion. And many people do that. We don't have that many people who do that here in Sulphur Spring, but maybe we have more than we are willing to acknowledge. You see, Jesus knows that the only way to quench your thirst is for us to come to him, for us to come to him. But what does that mean? What does it mean to come to him? It means that we are willing to put him before anyone else and anything else in our society, a difficult task. Something that may be, you know, good for the monks among us, but is it really good for us? The point is that we should acknowledge that we may go through all sorts of lengths to quench a thirst that only God can quench. As I've put before in different sermons, it's, in, it's important to recognize that we cannot receive from our fellow people, from our fellow men, from our fellow women, from our fellowship, we cannot receive from him what only God can give. And we keep on acting as if we could. If we could actually quench our thirst by what people are doing, at, but at the same time, thinking that we do not need Jesus. But Jesus says, uh uh, being thirsty, recognize, yes, but you also have to come to me. It's not enough to just recognize your thirst. And then there's a third sentence, or third part of this, this clause. If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. 
Now, what Jesus is recognizing is that we can have all the living water that you and I might want. We can have all of the recognition of our thirst. We can even come to Jesus. But if we don't come to him and drink, all of that is for naught. What's important is to acknowledge that, yes, we're thirsty. Yes, Jesus is the only one who can do it. But then we actually have to avail ourselves of, the, of Jesus, to avail ourselves for the water, the living water that he brings. Acknowledge our thirst. Recognize that we can only quench that thirst through him. And finally, for us to come to him and drink, actually drink. But there's one other thing that we need to point, point to in this text. Let me read it to you again. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has, has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living waters. You see, we can be part of the solution to the water problem. When we drink of living waters, then you and I are in a position where we can acknowledge the cross that Tom sang about. We can acknowledge the cross because the cross is the basis for our living water. And you and I can avail ourselves of that. Paul puts it the best way that I know. Paul says that, you, that we no longer live by ourselves for, but, or for ourselves, but we live for others so that we can share the living water that we have with those who are around us. Pentecost. Amen. That old rugged cross Stained with blood so divine A wondrous beauty I see For twas on that old cross Jesus suffered and died To pardon and sanctify me so I cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown That old rugged cross I will ever be true Its shame and reproach Gladly bear Then he'll call me someday To my home far away Where his glory forever I'll share so I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Thank you, George, and thank you, Tom. I just wanted to uh, make an announcement, this coming Sunday will be the first Sunday 
where we will actually meet together again, hopefully face to face, without encountering the invisible enemy, so to speak. Uh, I hope, if you're listening to this, that you will be here and will come and join us to celebrate the opening of our hearts, not just our church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we seem to forget that you are there for us and that you want nothing more than for us to be satisfied with you. And so we ask that you continue to bless this congregation, to bless Tom and George and, and Sam. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your love. And now let us pray the prayer that our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>